Okay, so today I'm going to be showing you how to make a paper crumpling animation on Blender, just like this one. But you can do it with any 2D image, basically. Okay, so we're going to open up a new Blender. Just hit General. We can delete this cube. And we're just going to hit Shift A and add a plane. Then the S key and increase it a little bit. And you just kind of want to generally match the proportions of the image that you're going to be using to crumble. So here I'm going to hit S and Y to hit to scale it on the Y axis. This is the image that I'm going to be using. It was just a random watercolor painting that I did and figured why not animate it. In Once you've got your proportions, you want to select the object and press tab so that you can go into the edit mode. And then you want to choose this loop cut. And we're basically just going to add like a little bit of geometry so that it can bend more realistically or bend at all. Um, normally with a mouse, it's a lot easier because I can just like use, you can use the scroll on the loop function to add a bunch of lines. But since I'm, I don't have my mouse with me, I'm, I just have to do them one by one. It doesn't have to be perfect. Like I have a little mistake here, but it's chill. It doesn't matter. Um, Okay, next step, you want to just come out of object mode. You can either press tab or you can go up here and choose object mode. And now we're going to go into the shading panel. And in the shading panel over here, we're going to hit new. And this will just give us the default material, which is all we want. Then in here, you hit shift A, go to texture and choose image texture. Place it over here and then open the image that you want to use. For me, I'm using this wager color. And then you want to connect the color to the base color of the principal BDS BSDF. I just glitched out there. Then if you click on your object and you open the UV editing and hit A to select all, you got a little map here that shows you basically how your image is laid out on the plane that we've created. So yours might not be perfect. I I guess mine luckily was fine, but you can, if it isn't right, then you can move it around, basically. You just select it all, press G, and then move it so that it is what you want and scale it. Yeah. Um, God. Why am I doing this? I don't know. Now we can get into the more interesting part. So we're going to hit Shift A and add a mesh sphere. Uh, UV sphere is fine. You can use either. And then we're going to scale it up to make it larger than the paper. Then you're going to want to open your timeline and create a keyframe at the first frame. So just hit I and then choose scale and then move forward to where you want. I'm just going to do 70 frames and then just hit S and scale down this ball to roughly this or to whatever you want it to be. I made a mistake here, which I've made a thousand times. And when I scaled it down, I forgot to um, record it. So basically now the animation didn't save. So if you made the same problem or maybe you didn't, um, just go back to 70, check that you already have the first keyframe hit record, then press S and scale it down. Now we are going to make this sphere into a collision object. So you want to choose this over here, the physics properties tab, and then choose collision. For the piece of paper, you want to choose cloth. So now basically they are acting forces against each other. But we obviously have a problem because the piece of paper just goes straight down. 
Since I only am going up to 70 frames, I'm also just going to reduce it here to 70 frames. To fix the dropping, you want to select your piece of paper and then scroll down in the physics tab. And you want to find collisions and check self collisions. And then you want to increase the friction to like 15. And then go down to field weights and you want to reduce the gravity all the way to zero. So now if you play it with the sphere hidden, you should be able to see a pretty close start to the complex. One thing I forgot to do is add some thickness to the sphere. Here you want to add a solidify modifier to the sphere. So you just click here, modifiers, add modifier, and it's over here, solidify. And we just want to add some thickness. So I'm just going to, no, that's too much. I'm just going to do 0 0.05 and I'm going to apply that. And now we should have a working crumpling simulation. So it of course still see, needs some work. It's a bit um, boxy. So one of the first steps that we can do is just select this and then choose shade smooth. That helps. Um, and then what we can also do is add some subdivision surface. Sometimes it doesn't show the paper crumbling even when you scroll through it because it just hasn't finished loading. So yeah, I'm going to add a subdivision surface modifier. Here we go. And I'm just going to set it to, I'm just going to add a few. I usually do like four, whatever. But another effect that this is going to have is it's going to slightly round the corners too. So this is how it's looking right now with the image. It's definitely too bright, but we'll get there. I'd also like it to just get a little smaller. So I'm going to scale the sphere even more. And another thing that another thing that's important for when you're going to want to render this out is go up here to filter and choose this camera. And basically now we can turn off the sphere so that the sphere doesn't render with everything else. Because if you were to just turn off the sphere on the eye, then when you go later to render your image, you're still going to see the sphere. Um, so yeah, just turn it off on both. Okay, let's start setting up the scene. So I'm going to hit zero so that you can enter the camera mode. And then if you hit N and choose view and select camera to view, now when you move, your camera will move with you. So I'm just going to choose something like this. You can move it around as you please. I'm also going to change the aspect ratio. So just come out here to the output settings. And I'm just going to do 1350 by 1080. That's a ratio I quite like. I'm also going to add another plane just so we can set up like a table behind it. So I'm just going to scale that up. Yeah, that's good. Rotate, hit R, hit Z. Doesn't really matter too much. And then we're going to hit G, which is the grab, and then Z for the Z axis and move it a little down so it's below the paper. I like to put it even more so there's a bit of a shadow. Select this and go into the shading tab. And very much in the same way as we did for the drawing, we're going to do, we're going to add some another image texture here. So shift a texture, image texture. So I've got a wood image already saved. So open desktop wood. And you can find um, a wood image just like anywhere on the internet. Really. Like I just got this one from Google images, but um, I might include it in the description of the video. Next start. Okay, so now we got that, we make it the base color. Um, I'm also going to go touch up the paper a bit. So just select the paper. We're going to add a little roughness. Maybe if I go around, put some metallic in. I just like to mess around with these until I kind of get what I want. Um, yeah, I think that looks good enough. 
And after the word, we're going to add a little bit of roughness to maybe some metallic. Good enough for now. Back to layouts. Just going to adjust the camera a little bit. Something that you should do is after you're animating, if you've been using the record feature, just remember to turn it off because now I've just animated the position of my camera. So if you've actually done the same thing, then you can just select your camera and this keyframe should pop up here and you can just select it and hit X, delete keyframes. Let's see how it looks. Okay, so now we're, going, we're having a problem with the table and the piece of paper intersecting. So they kind of go through each other. And this is just like a lazy, lazy way to fix it, but this is just the way I'm gonna do it for this video. Um, I'm gonna set some keyframes on the table so that it moves back. So I'm just gonna scale it up a little bit. And then delete this keyframe that I accidentally made earlier. And then I'm gonna find the point where the table and the paper first start intersecting. So I'm gonna go somewhere here in the timeline and then I'm gonna start recording. Hit G, hit Z, just move it down a little bit. And then I'm gonna go forward in the timeline. And I'm just gonna check when it's intersecting. Yeah, so somewhere there. And I'm just gonna move by hitting G and Z this backwards. So we kind of get also like a floating effect of the paper. I'm gonna adjust the timing a bit. So I'm gonna select the sphere and I'm gonna move the second keyframe a little bit back just so it's a bit faster. And yeah, you can just mess around with all these settings. That was a bit too much. Okay, we're almost done. Now we want to get a feel for how it's going to look with shadows and stuff. So I'm going to go up here and select the render view, or you could also hit Z and select rendered from there. Go here to your render properties and check which rendering engine you're in. Most people just use EV or cycles. I just want this to be a quick render and I don't think it's going to make too much difference on this one. And EV is real time. So, um, yeah, just to see if you're happy with it, I would usually go to like some midpoint in my animation where something interesting is happening. Go up here, render and render image. And I feel like that looks okay for the purpose of this tutorial. So this is important. Whenever you're rendering, you have to check where you're rendering out to. You don't want them to just be, you don't want your render to be ending up in the same place because your files just get chaotic. So I'm just going to go here, make a new folder, call it tutorial, whatever, I can't spell right now. Open that up and hit accept. And then check these settings. You just want RGBA or RGB. Um, Cause we don't have any transparency here. It doesn't matter. You may also want to check in your render properties, the amount of sampling that you have. And if you reduce the sampling, you can reduce the amount of time that it takes, but you're also reducing the detail. I'm just going to leave it at 64. And then we're going to want to choose ambient occlusion, bloom, and screen space reflections, just to add a little bit more variety in the shadows and things. Then you want to go ahead and hit render and render animation. This window will pop up and it's just going to render them out one by one. Once the render is done, you can just close that. So basically, you're going to get a file environment that looks like this. It's literally just an image for each and every frame. Um, and there's loads of different ways that you can do this. But the way that I personally prefer to do it is with Photoshop. So I'm just going to open up Photoshop and then go to File, Open. Or you can just kick, hit Command-O. Go and navigate to where you have those images. Choose the first one and then select image sequence. Open it up, hit 24 frames per second. It might say something different, but just choose 24 because that's usually the default in Blender. You can change it there too if you prefer. 
Um, and then if you play it here, this should be the first time that you can see your animation kind of coherently working. A lot of the time what I'll do and why I prefer Photoshop is because I'll mess around here with some layers and I tend to be ex um, exporting like transparent things from Blender. So I do like backgrounds much more easily in Photoshop than pre-rendering them in Blender. Um, sometimes I do need to do it in Blender though because of reflections and stuff like that. So once you've done that, you can just choose File, um, Export, and then Render Video. Tutorial. I'm just gonna export it to my desktop. And then Format, you wanna choose H.264, just standard MP4. Uh, now you should have a working little video. Um, there we go. And then next steps I usually take from here to make the video look more like this is I just throw it in Premiere and um, I just added some sound effects. I literally just like crumpled a piece of paper in front of my microphone. Then I just reversed it again so that it's on a loop. Yeah, thank you for watching my first YouTube video. I hope that that was somewhat helpful or at least informative or maybe entertaining if you're a nerd. Um, and yeah, hopefully I'll make some more videos soon. Thanks. Bye. Yeah. Two thirds of the week on no sleep.